What's up guys? Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, one of my favorite uh, dive watches of all time. It's the uh, Seiko SKX. Uh, just joking. <laughs> it's actually the Seiko Turtle. Uh, this is the Seiko SRP779 uh, Pepsi bezel. Not to be confused with the Seiko SKX009 Pepsi bezel. What really uh, distinguishes uh, the Turtle and the Prospects line from the SKX more entry level dive watch line from Seiko is the movement. Uh, this guy's running Seiko's Caliber 4R36, which um, the main difference between that and the SKX that runs the Caliber 7S26 is that you can hack this and it's uh, you can also hand wind it too. So when I say hack, I'm just going to unscrew the screw down crown, pull the bezel out, oh, sorry, the crown, and look at that, the second hand stops. And then you can just push it back in. And you can also manually wind um, the crown when it's in its first position. And this is really like smooth as butter. It's actually much, much more smooth than even some of my Swiss divers, which is uh, saying quite a bit. So getting back to uh, the movement on this watch, it's uh, 24 joules um, versus the SKX 21 joules. Both um, of the Seiko divers run about 40 hours on a power reserve, and they both operate at 21,600 beats per hour, um, which is roughly about six ticks uh, every second, which you can hopefully see uh, with a sweep of a second hand on the dial. Now the dial itself, uh, I want to say it's like a black matte dial, but depending on how the light hits it, I'll just shift perspectives here, it almost looks blue to a certain extent. Uh, it's really nice depending on how the light touches it. You can see the uh, the hour uh, markers are, they look like they're applied, I believe they're applied. I like how they distinguish the orientation of the watch too, because the 12 o'clock you can see kind of has that uh, two prong hour marker and then it's distinctly different from the nine o'clock and six o'clock. Looking at the, uh, the three o'clock position is where you have your day date complication, which is really nice. The uh, loom on this watch is amazing. It uses Seiko's proprietary Lumabrite technology. I'll, um, I'll switch to a loom shot really quickly just so you guys can see how it operates hey guys just switching perspectives to give you a quick loom shot of the Seiko turtle it uses the um, as I mentioned the uh, the Seiko's proprietary loomer bright and it just glows like a torch really really great stuff the bezel itself is uh, 120 unidirectional bezel. It's a little stiff over the SKX I would say. But they machined the bezel really well. It grips really well. It's really nice. If you're talking about the dimensions of this watch, um, it's just a hair wider in, in, across like in the dimension compared to an SKX model. It's 44 millimeters across um, the same thickness, they're both about 13 millimeters thick, and the lug distance is the same to um, the SKX and the Turtle have a lug distance of 22 millimeters. Um, lug to lug though, it's only about 46 millimeters, so it's really nice, even though you have um, about a 45 millimeter width, I mean the lug distance, it's kind of short relative to that to that diameter. It, it sits really well. Um, I'll just flip over so you can see the case back. You can see it's got the uh, the Seiko Great Wave embedded in the middle like the Tsunami. Uh, it says Air Diver 200 meters so it's water resistant 200 meters um, suitable for diving at that depth but not saturation diving which is usually a greater depth and for longer periods of time. What a really nice feature though for all of the Seiko divers I believe 
for the turtle for sure is that uh, they meet ISO certifications for dive watches, which is basically a really stringent criteria um, with respect to the visibility of the watch. So the face here has to be really visibility with like really great visibility with no light. Um, the bezel it has to be unidirectional and it has to have like five minute markers. Um, and it also meets really strict criteria for being shock chemical and magnetic resistant, which is really, really nice. Um, yeah, other than that, I think the case back, it just, it does mention the movement, which is the 4R36. You can see that it's a screw down case back, which is great. It aids in the water resistance. Um, I love the polishing they do on this case too. Um, it's pretty much all polished um, around the sides. And then uh, near the tips of the lugs here, it's slightly brushed. You can see the crown is plain. It's easy to grip though. Um, and the way the, uh, the coin cushion case works, it really protects the crown too from like banging up against. And it also protects, like I mentioned before, the bezel. If you look at the bezel too, it's machined really well. You can see that they did a good job um, just adding like the texturing of it. It's easy to grip. And another thing I love that they do in the Prospects line, and specifically, I mean, for the Turtle too, is if you look at the ends of the lugs, they have drilled lug holes. And uh, all that does is it makes it really easy to get access to the spring bar, and you can swap out straps on the fly. Speaking of straps, Seiko provides, on, on this one, you can also get on a bracelet, but uh, on the uh, SRP779, they give you this really nice plush rubber strap with a signed buckle and buckle keeper. And you can see it's actually a bit textured um, on the back too. And it's really supple. It's really soft. I like it a lot. Um, I'll actually throw it on the wrist really quickly so I can give you guys a good wrist shot of how the watch looks. And there you go guys. It just sits really, really nicely on the wrist. Um, the strap is really soft. With the case, the coin cushion case, it's so comfortable. It has really good wrist presence. And I'll just flip it over so you can see the buckle, the buckle keeper. I mean, I forget I'm wearing it, but people notice it, <laughs> that's for sure. And again, with that super luma bright um, loom applied on it, I mean, it just glows like a torch, really, really visible. Um, overall, I mean, it's a little subdued with just the, uh, the clean dial, which I like, but it's very functional. I mean, you get all the benefits of a really great dive watch, um, and you really get that really great Seiko quality in terms of movement, finishing. Um, and the last thing I'll mention too is just the, uh, the mineral is, um, Seiko is also propriety hard lex. It's, um, a flat crystal. It's not domed. Like I think you can get for some of the SKXs. Um, but overall, um, you're going to be paying between 60 to hundred dollars Canadian more for the Seiko turtle over the SKX. And what that gets you again is the upgraded movement. Um, which is the 4R36 movement over the Caliber 7S26. It's 21 joules versus, uh, sorry, it's 24 joules versus the SKX21. Um, and the main thing is the hacking and the ability to hand wind the movement too. You also get those uh, drilled lug holes, which is really nice to switch out straps. And just the finishing on the casework is really, really nice too. So overall, guys, one of my favorite watches, definitely one of the best dive watches that I own, um, great value for money. So uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this quick overview of the Seiko Turtle. Please let me know what you think in the comments below.